Good evening, race fans, and welcome to another episode, well, episode two of Behind the Wheel. A few weeks ago, during the KTTS Area Dirt Track Championships, we were able to catch up with Midwest AMOD driver Gary Krebs, drives a 26. We were able to talk to him for a short amount of time because I tell you what, trying to get almost 100 cars into those pits, it's a little hard to set up and do an interview. Enjoyed our time talking to Gary and getting to know a little bit more about him and and his support system around him. So I hope you enjoy this quick video and interview with Gary and uh, can't wait to see you at the end. Good morning, race fans. Today's gonna be an awesome morning. We're out here at Springfield Raceway for the KTTS Dirt Track Area Championships. I got Gary Cribs with me. He's, uh, after last week, we didn't know if you are gonna be uh, out here running this week. We thought you were gonna be done for the year after talking to you last week, so. Good to see you back and uh, got the car ready to go. It was good to see uh, the, the before and after pictures uh, that you shared. Yeah, I thought I was done. I, I felt done, felt defeated. And the car was hurt pretty bad, but uh, my, uh, my dad said we're not done and we're gonna fix it and we fixed it. Uh, you gotta love having the crew like that to, to help yeah. you out. So we got a, such a busy day today. These interviews are gonna be cutting a little short that way we can get through as many drivers as possible. So we're gonna hop right into this. So most of these questions are kind of just typical, you know, what fans wanna know, just to get to know you a little bit more, uh, the man behind the wheel. So uh, first one is how did you get into racing? Uh, my, my dad, every weekend we, we would go to the track three nights a week. We'd go to uh, Friday night at Bolivar, Saturday night at uh, I-44 Speedway, uh, Sunday night at Monette, three nights a week through the summer. We just we just lived racing. Man, I love it. I love it. That's that's kind of how I grew up too. Just uh, just at the racetrack, nonstop. Mm -hmm. So, um, so with that being said, do you have any crazy pre-race rituals? I know you're you're one of the first ones here about every week. But is there something you do every week that if you don't do it, just feels way off? Uh, everything I touch, all my stuff has to be in the same spot. Everything has to be moved to the same spot. Everything has to be in order. Uh, that's my ritual. Your ritual. Yeah. Well, tonight's a little different. You're pitted in a different spot. Is and, that throwing you off? That, that's okay. No, I, I've parked here before. It's good. So, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's got good chi. All so right. You got good. a little bit of the the, um, yeah. the OCD when it comes to your pre-race. Feng shui. Yeah. Feng, okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you're the number 26. Is there any meaning behind your number? Uh, uh, that was my wedding date. Yeah. Okay. Way back when. Way back when? Mm -hmm. Just rolling with it. Just rolling with it. I like it. I like it. So, there's a lot of professional drivers out there between NASCAR, dirt track, things like that. Is there anyone that you resemble the most with your driving style? Oh, no. <laughs> no <laughs> all of them are way better. I just, I just do what I do. So, no. Okay, I like that. That's a, yeah. it's, it's better to try to be yourself than oh, try yeah. to emulate somebody yeah, else. No. All right, I like it. So, um, outside of racing, do you have any hobbies? I uh, used to play a lot of sports, but I've had a lot of knee surgery, so that's really why I got into driving myself. Uh, uh, no more no more sports. No more sports? Yeah. So what's your favorite sport then? Really, to, to play? Uh, it's been 15 years since I've played a sport, so I, I mean, I'll, I'll watch some football. Okay. Uh, if, if your knees were good and you had an opportunity to play one sport at, say, your prime, what would, what would you do? Tell you the truth, hard court volleyball. Hardcore it was, was my it was my number one sport. I, I, I played year round. Yeah, I, I always enjoyed it. I I was always you know the, the football, basketball, baseball mm -hmm. player, but I always enjoyed you know in gym you know in high school and stuff like that when volleyball would yeah would come out. Of course, I'm tall, so I was always we played competitive. It runs in the family. My my daughter's a college coach, uh, and and she uh, she went to state playing volleyball. And, uh, it it kind of runs in the family. And they had a, a big win. Yep, they swept uh, their first tournament. It was her first uh, tournament as a jury assistant coach, and they swept the tournament. Man, that's so, awesome. Good to hear. Congratulations mm -hmm. to her. She'll be here tonight. That, that's, that is awesome. So we all saw on showmedirt.tv last week your crash. Yeah. Um, what is your worst crash that you can remember? You know, none of them have ever been that really that bad. And, and in the scheme of things, yeah, we, we hurt the car and yeah, that hurt, but there's a lot worse wrecks that happen. I've been lucky. I've had, I've had a lot of wrecks equal, equally bad to that. 
I, I haven't had any worse. That's good. That's yeah. good. Especially, you know, we see the, the videos of the drivers flipping all over the place. Yeah, and no. Things like that. Yeah, so that's a lot worse. It's, it's a good yeah. that you're able to keep it all on all four wheels and then mm -hmm. they've all been kind of equal. Yeah. So what is the, uh, the furthest away you've ever hauled to go race? <laughs> I race pretty much locally. I-44 Speedway, Bolivar, Lucas Oil Speedway. I, I pretty much keep it in, in southwest Missouri. There are a lot of good tracks in the area. Oh, yeah, there's too many to just g drive past them. I, uh, I, I yeah. noticed when I, because I drive all over the state of Missouri for work. And there's just tracks everywhere. Yeah, yeah there, there's just too many good tracks around here. And, and there's so many trees, you don't know there's a track there until that, it's some, that, Well, there's a track up there, and you start Googling, and sure enough, there's That's a, for sure, yeah. I, I didn't know there a triple X Speedway, or double X Speedway up in uh, California. Uh-huh. I didn't know there was a track up there, and I'd driven by it for like a year before I knew there was a track back there. So, uh, have uh, how often throughout the week do you think about racing? Pretty much every day. Yeah. Just, you know, what I could do better, yeah. or things like that. What what can I get a little bit more out of the car? Every day. Yeah, it's my happy place. It's your happy place? I like yeah. it. I, I hear that a lot. Um, so, at the track, you know, we're, we're here. We got a big, we're, it's all day event here today. What is your favorite track food? Not barbecuing in the pits or anything, but from the concession stands or something, what's your favorite track food? The burgers are great here. Oh, man, they, they really are. No, they're damn good. <laughs> yeah. They are good. They're the season just right. <laughs> um, what, so what's your favorite track drink? Track drink? Yep. Freaking Pepsi. Pepsi? That's that's favorite drink. All, all around yeah. right there. Pepsi? Mm -hmm. See, I'm so torn. My, my dad growing up, he was Pepsi. My mom was Dr. Pepper, mm -hmm. so I got a good mix of the two. So I'll, I'll go through like a month where I'll have nothing but Pepsis, and then like the next month will be Dr. Pepper. And yeah. It's, um, man, trying <laughs> to please your parents is difficult growing up. Yep. <laughs> so um, if you had the opportunity to run any car, any track, anywhere in the United States, where would it be? I, I'm not a real dreamer when it comes to tracks. Uh, racing a midwest mod at springfield raceway it's a dream we could we could be in something else we we could be in a b mod uh whatever we wanted but this is this is the dream and the, dr the dream's right here i i don't even think about going anywhere else i i'll, I'll watch other races at other tracks i don't want to race at them i, I want to race here i like it all right we love having you i love watching it week in and week you. out it is it is absolute fun to especially when i when i walk in and i can already see you, you parked all the way back here you got to find a closer parking spot. It's no, a long we're good. walk. We're good. <laughs> so it's a long walk. Um, so we, we did cover your favorite sport. Um, and we kind of covered already, you know, um, a little bit, but I want it a little bit deeper. So you, you talked about racing at Springfield's a dream. So what, what keeps you coming back here? Uh, it, it, it's different. Um, it, it's just a great competition. I love racing against the, the talent that we have in the Midwest Mods. It wasn't always like this. Uh, and I, I did better years ago in this class, but the competition, competition I do better now than when I did better than when I was winning championships. The competition level is so freaking high. I, I love it. I, I love being door to door with, with uh, you know, former national champions. Uh, guys who, who who have come up and and are and hold just a great wheel here there's there's so many good freaking cars the competition is is awesome it, 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 if you come here and you just blow everybody away i don't think it'd be that fun but uh it, it's hard to get a top five here these guys are good it is and if those of you watching and that will be watching this episode you know it's it's hard to to almost keep up with the race because there's so much action You'll have, you know, maybe the top five cars are battling for position, and then there's there's maybe a half a car length between the next group of five cars that are battling out, mm -hmm. and it's so hard. If you start in the back, it is very hard to work your way to the front here. It, it is. Uh, guys have really, thing, things have changed with this class. Uh, there's a lot more horsepower. The shock shocks are, are better. Guys have figured, they're not just throwing a set of shocks on. They're figuring out what they need. The setups are better. Uh, there There's... Uh, there's a lot of dedication to the sport. 
That's and what I like, sure. what I've noticed in my, in my short time here at Springfield Raceway is the the drivers communicate with each other, and they want the the closer competition. Oh, oh ab absolutely. So if, if you're running a set of shocks and they ask you, hey, what are you running? You're, Here's what I'm running, or close to what I'm running. Where, uh, if if anybody needs a part, that from anybody, anybody's giving them a part. That's just that's just how this class is. I absolutely love it. You, you don't see that at a lot of tracks, and I, I think that's one of the special I, things. I think it's because we we're all here together every week. Exactly. Yeah. Like uh, like Jerry said earlier in a he was with the Copenhagen Bandit. He said, you know, the the camaraderie of the drivers here, and you know, averaging mm -hmm. 100 cars a week. You guys battle it out every week. Yeah, the tempers flare at times, Here but nowhere near what you see at other tracks. Yeah, no, this, this is it's pretty mellow here. Uh, absolutely, great family environment. Mm -hmm. Great family environment. Uh, so, Saturday night, there's no racing. There's nothing else going on. What are you going to be doing? Chances are at work. Working. Fair enough. Fair yeah. enough. We won't get into that, no, but uh, this this is all about fun. So, um, one thing my daughter wants to know, she's nine, mind you, she wants to know what your favorite animal is. Dog. Dog? Yep. That is, that is a good answer. Definitely dogs. I'm two for two on the dogs. Yep. What kind of what kind of dog do you have? Uh, two Jack Russells. Two Jack right, Russells. No, one, one Jack Russell and a, uh, a Border Collie. I had two Jack Russells and they both passed away from old age. Dogs are, we have a uh, Shepherd Mastiff. Yeah. He is huge. Oh, I bet. And he's just close to 200 pounds. Mm-hmm. And he's just a big baby. Love dogs. I love them, too. They yeah. they are, you can, t you can tell a person by, by their mm -hmm. dog mm -hmm. and how their dog acts. So mine, mine's a big baby that likes to get out of his leash and go for a run through the woods. Oh, yeah. But uh, So what goes through your head, you know, when you're you're in the staging, you're driving, you get onto the back stretch, and that green flag's getting ready to wave, what is going through your head? Uh, I, I'm looking to see what the two guys in front, the uh, very two guys in front of me, w w what they do. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to figure out. I know this guy, what he usually does. I know that guy, what he usually does, uh, to kind of pick my line to settle in on for a few laps. It's always, always good to have somewhat of a game plan. Is there is there any sense of euphoria where just everything kind of just goes quiet? Uh, yeah, I, I go on autopilot. Now there's some guys where they they hear, they can hear the car coming up behind them, beside them. Do you do you hear that? Do you feel that? Yeah, uh, beside me, I, I I can hear them. Yep, and that's that's pretty important because you don't want to make a move if you can hear somebody next to you. And that's one thing I love about dirt track racing. You have no spotters there's no one telling you which line to take there's no one telling you if you got someone high someone low so it's really you have to feel listen and and just be aware of not only the front of your car but everything else around you everything yeah you have to look you know 100 yards ahead or more if you don't you're gonna end up broken yeah i like it i like it so what we're gonna go into quick is um what i call well, uh, some buddies of mine, we were talking earlier, they, they have a podcast, they're a powerlifting podcast, and they do what's called overrated, underrated. Mm -hmm. So it's it's just quick topics kind of off the top of my head of of just random things that uh, might be controversial, might not. It's not going to be too crazy. Mm -hmm. um, but just, you can ride the line. You can't ride the line. You have to give if it's overrated or underrated, but you can uh, explain your reasoning as much as you'd like. So uh, this is this is for all the marbles. Okay. This is uh, a lot of a lot of people do the quick fire. You know, a hey, what's your favorite this this this. Mm -hmm. You know, but uh, overrated underrated for me is, is a lot of fun. So overrated or underrated uh, track prep Under during during the night track prep during the night. Uh, I, I tell you what, I can't say it's overrated or under underrated here. It's perfect. Uh, the the track. I'll I'll, I'll, I'll cuss Jerry. <laughs> but in the end, it works. It, it usually works out just fine, you know. I, I've I've heard that answer quite a bit. Where they they you know at some points it gets kind of annoying at times, but then they they run the race and they're like, man, it, it makes total sense of what happened. Yeah. So I, I can I can understand that. So overrated, underrated, the uh, Gateway Nationals in St. Louis. Uh, underrated. It's the 
biggest event in the United States. I, I want to go, but it's scheduled. Haven't missed one. Uh, I, I can't make it this year. When it's scheduled, it's just a bad time for me. Oh. I'm so depressed. So depressed. I had a buddy from South Dakota came all the way down and ran that one. Yeah. So uh, it, it's it's awesome. I, I love to, to, to watch it online, things like that. Overrated or underrated? Show me dirt dot TV. Show me dirt uh, underrated. Everybody needs to watch it. Oh, he does. Unless you, if you can't get to the track, if you can get here, mm -hmm. you know it's it's always fun to. And, and even me, I go back and watch. Uh, yeah, I, I have I have too. Just to, it's kind of like um, you know I was, I was a big football guy growing up, so I was always going back and watching film. You know, and yep. you know, for me as an announcer, I can go back and boy, I messed that announce up or mm -hmm. something. But as a driver too, you can see. Well, I had I had a little bit more room. If you can remember how you felt at it's, that moment. It's a way different perspective when you watch those videos it is. Than, than when you're in the car. Technology has just helped it completely. That, that's for sure. All right, so the final one, overrated or underrated? We're going to do the Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah, uh-huh. That, that's a tough one. I, I, uh, everybody everybody knows that they're, they're a powerhouse, but, uh, you know, you got to have an offensive line. Uh, that's for sure, and we just didn't didn't have that at the end of the year. Yeah, so now it's a, it's definitely going to be uh, interesting to see how it goes with a, a complete new revamp of, yeah. of the line. Uh, yeah, that's 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 for sure. They they made Mahomes look bad. Nobody can nobody can quarterback a team without any protection. Uh, nobody can, and especially a guy that as a, as a magician we saw in the Super Bowl with Mahomes. Yep, uh, the the passes that he was able to get off was just phenomenal. Oh, amazing! Yep. So, so well, Gary, like I said, we're going to keep this pretty quick not the typical 30 minutes but we got a lot of cars getting ready to pull in so good luck tonight thank you um, i'll have this up tomorrow so and i'll i'll let everybody know how you finished and, and everything oh, like that it. and yeah. hopefully you can get more more than a quarter of a of a lap in yeah for three sure. quarters of for a lap sure. in and uh we'll do a little better good luck tonight and uh i'll get out of here and let you get let you get set up thank you yep thank you well i hope you enjoyed that interview as much as i did a lot of things I learned about Gary, his hard work and dedication, the family support system he has around him to keep that 26 on the track every week. That night at the KTTS Area Dirt Track Championship, he finished fifth. Now, ever since we've had a recording, and a little bit before that, of course, we talked about it, his big accident there, and he kind of thought he was done for the year, but ever since then, it's been a rough couple nights. Yeah, we had the... Uh, Trust uh, 66 Cash Money Late Model Show where the Midwest A-Class ran both nights. Well, night one, he got a did not start the main event. And Saturday night, ended up watching the show from the stands. But turned around last week, ended up finishing eighth this past race and uh, sitting sixth overall in his class of the point standings. We like to thank Gary for all his time and effort that he gave to us to take his time out and uh, an interview with us. Also, I like to thank him every week for being a guy just to hang out with and talk to in the pits. Guys, if you are new to racing and you want to see something go on, Gary's one of the nicest guys you could talk to. So we hope you enjoyed this episode of Behind the Wheel. Look for us next time where we talk to another Midwest Mod A-Class driver, Tim Mullins. Until then, y'all have a great week.